Well, if it isn't my good friend, the big dog himself. That is right. What is going on, my man? How you doing? Oh man, it is. It's been a it's been a good good season, to say the least. Huh? It has it definitely has been. That is for sure. Um, first and foremost, before we uh, get started with the podcast to the audience watching at home. I want to address something that has recently, in light of things, uh, have has been brought up in the community, which is a video of, uh, and you may know this person, you may not. I know you were working uh, the Terror Tram, which we'll get into in a little bit. Um, an HHN employee, uh, a monster scare actor, was uh, yeah. very rudely and uncalled for, like shoved, like, and I'm talking about shoved out of the way for some for some reason. I don't I don't know the complete logistics of the reason why. However, I do believe that no matter what the reason was, that is never the answer to uh to to, to approach in this situation. And um we heavily advocate here on the on the Knights of Horror to never touch the scare actors because they are essentially doing their job to scare you and to bring a story to life. And you pay money to go see them at this event. So, therefore, you once you pay that money, you are pretty much signing a virtual contract, which is in their terms and conditions, to not touch the scare actors because they will not touch you. Um, so, I just thought we had to address that real quick because this is our uh, an HSS scare actor we are talking with today. Uh, I don't know if you want to throw any two cents in that as well, but I just I, I had to say something about it. Yeah. That. No, I, I would, I would, because I know him as well. So I know the the gentleman that was involved in that, um, you know. And it's a bummer. It's 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 a bummer. You have to, we have to be talking about this. Would this camp just be a fun, you know, just like hey, we're just gonna get together and talk about fun haunt stuff? It's like you know, it's, it's a shame we have to even talk about this. You know what I mean? Yeah. That like the situation even happened in the first place. It's it's despicable. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it was like one of that's one of the craziest hits I've ever seen like guest on performer at a haunt i've i haven't seen it i don't think it hit worse than that yeah um and that's just not a, a horror nights is one thing what about knots we, we also need to talk about the stilt walker video i'm sure everyone's seen right with yeah. the guy kicking in the guy's stilt which i'm obviously as you can probably imagine very heated about as well oh yeah and i, I know you, how you I, have <laughs> yeah you have a history of doing some stilts so that i could see that could bother especially anyone who goes out there <laughs> stilts is a very tough job to do as it is keeping balance uh, all night and to do it around guests, but when you have guests going out of their way to try to push you off your balance is a complete no-no. Yeah, you know, it's 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 really a shame because um, it happens everywhere, every haunt. Um, you see videos like this get reposted, and, you know, I've seen this video reposted a million times, um, and every time the people are saying the same thing, this happens, this happens, this happens. Uh, it's kind of nice people are spreading awareness. Yeah. Um, when we first found out about that video of the gentleman from Horror Nights, uh, the question to him was, hey, do you, we're in a big group chat, obviously, on the Terror Tram, right? There's like 100 people in it um, on Instagram. And we asked, hey, do you want us to report it? Do you want us to try to get it taken down? Like, how would you like to? And he, he said, no, he wants it up because he wants it to spread awareness to this, this type of situation, these type of guests. And kind of, you know, the the risk you take if you you come to work these haunts, you know. And this doesn't always happen. This is definitely a special case, you know. Right. But these things do happen, so to be prepared. So he he kind of wants to spread awareness. He's he's fine. He's he's doing just okay. He he's not permanently injured. Thank goodness. You know, he could have fallen and you know knocked his head, but he he didn't. Fortunately, you know the the scare actor is doing just fine. Uh, he is in the process of, of you know, with something that we all don't want to ever have to deal with, but has happened at every haunt I've been to, I've heard of. He's trying to press charges, you know, and, and take this, you know, because it was, it's, it's assault. That's all it is. Oh, you're, yeah. you're assaulting somebody as a, as a guest to go to these things. And I'm sure everyone listening to this podcast has an appreciation for Halloween events. So I, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of preaching to the choir here because everyone probably agrees with this. But yeah, there is never an acceptable moment for that uh, whatsoever. To, to to hit somebody who's trying to perform like that um, on the ground like that. That's just insane. That, that is just insane to me to see that happen. Uh, I don't really know the full story, to be honest. You know, I'm sure that's not really my really place to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, I, I always heard the rumors of like, oh, apparently he accidentally touched somebody and then what whatever happened, happened. Hey, it is what it is. It's just you should never respond like that. He just came out of nowhere and blindsided them. Yeah. You know? 
It, it you can tell like, the scare actor in the video was moved on. It, he had uh, moved it, on. It honestly looked like someone like it looked like you're watching a football game. I'm not even lying. Like, yeah, and that's yeah. like the best way to explain it. It looks like you're watching a damn football game, and this guy comes out of nowhere and just tackles this guy, and this guy goes flying towards the base side. Yeah, I, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it when I saw it. It was such a hard hit, and he just, he's just sitting there you know, performing for the next guest. You could tell he's already moved on. He's already just yeah. gone on to the next thing. And you want to know what the worst part about this whole thing is too? The, the guy is the most, like I I've talked to him, you know, a handful of times, obviously this year, he is like the most mild tempered, like chill guy. Like he's such a chill dude. I'm not obviously going to disclose his name, but yeah. he is, a, he's a really cool dude. He's a really solid dude. And he would never like, at least from what I know him from, never heard a fly. You know what I mean? Yeah really just really chill really mild tempered really just like hey just a really friendly guy and and that happened to him that happened to him you can't believe it i, I couldn't believe it i was just dumbstruck to be like out of all people yeah you know because well, he he wouldn't do anything to warrant that i don't care what people say happened but it seems like everybody in the comments everyone's defending him everyone's against the the person you oh know, I've, so. I've seen so much defense for him over the last couple of days and and it is it is, it's because it, you know a lot of what he went through, a lot of people go through, like you said, on a, on a yearly basis, and it's just something. Yeah, it that's happens. Like, it's like where somebody, everybody goes to these haunts, and everybody just thinks they they could just act out all of a sudden. It's like, mm -hmm. just act like if you were going anywhere else, and just be respectful, have fun, and enjoy it. Just yeah. you know, it's like people are performing for you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They're they're literally trying to do something fun for you. Like live, it's friends. live theater in a sense. You know what I mean? You're paying yeah, to see yeah, watch live theater. You know, it's these like, dudes. This guy's a this guy's someone's like son. You know? Yeah. That's somebody's son out there, somebody's brother, just like walking around, just having fun with his friends, trying to have, <laughs> trying to perform so you and your friends and your girlfriend, and your boyfriend, whoever you're with, you can have a good time. You know, that's like a little what we're out there trying to do, and to do that, it's crazy. Um, and from what I know, that wasn't the last night. Uh, he continued scaring. He finished the year, good and he's him. planning on coming, and he's and he is planning on coming back next year. Hey, champion. He, he said, he said it's not stopping him from coming back. He hey. wants to come back. Comes back even stronger. So. For, yeah, I uh, wish I wish I could release some of his messages like in response to that. He's been just like, no, it's okay, guys. It's okay. Like just so mild tempered. So like mentally, good. mentally strong for real. Good. It's crazy. Like, you know, I, I'd be so pissed if that happened to me, you know, and he, oh. he's taking it just like he's just diffusing it. Guys, it's okay. It's okay. Or, you know, we're, 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 we're handling it. It's being you know, handling, I, you know, I, I'm already crazy it, 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 to kind of turn the t uh, tempo. A little bit, I'm already scared to see. I'm already I'm always scared to see jokingly nate especially if you ever saw him at six flags you you don't know what was going to come out of nate's mouth i'm scared to see a pissed off nate like a pissed off nate's <laughs> probably even like you thought jokingly nate was dope i mean pissed <laughs> off nate's just gonna be like bam it takes a lot for me to get to that point honestly it takes a whole lot i, I don't get there often um to get really upset um yeah i feel like i'm pretty level-headed at all times um so, I mean, definitely the most angry I, I would get is when I would see people messing with like other performers in my area. Yeah, that would that would piss me off. But I try doing the right thing and and finding someone who can actually help, you know, because if I just get in the way, I'm just I'm just making more of a problem. So usually yeah. the, usually the right thing to do is is to locate security or a supervisor, somebody in the immediate vicinity so they can come over and, and handle the situation, catch them, kick them out. Um. But there has been times, yeah, I'm not going to lie. Um, there has been times at, at Fright Fest. It didn't happen at Horror Nights this year where I've had to step in between somebody. Um, great example is one time at, at Six Flags. You know, I'll just, I'll just admit this out loud. I don't, I don't mind anymore. Um, I had to step in between somebody who, who ran up behind a still walker and pushed push the still walker. And so the still walker almost fell over. And yeah. the, the person came back to do it a second time. So I had to act fast. I just did what I thought would be natural. And I just kind of stuck my hand out and kind of just blocked him and kind of pushed, pushed that person, I guess, back because he was literally about to push this person over. And the thing with stilts is, you, you know, oftentimes you're not at that high, right? Yeah. You're only, you know, people think it's, I mean, it, it's, it definitely is a skill because I would love to talk about still walking today. Um, it's definitely a talent. It takes, you know, it's a skill you have to learn. But at the end of the day, you're only up two, three feet off the ground which in reality isn't that big of a deal, you know? It's like standing on a chair, right. like your your kitchen table chair and falling over. So you're not really falling from that high of a height. However, you could still seriously injure or kill yourself straight up. That's, you know what I'm saying? There is a danger to it because you are up a little higher. You fall, you could potentially fall the wrong way. There's so many factors that could happen. So with stilts, it's like so important 
that you're safe. You know what I mean? Like safety has got to be the number one thing because you could, you could seriously injure yourself very easily uh, by falling the wrong way. So, you know, to see someone about to get pushed over like that, I had to just kind of act and I just grabbed and threw aside. And that person was like, Oh, I'm going to tell on you, grab me, you grab me, you know? And I was like, do it. <laughs> just, just do it. I don't care. You know, like I'm just going to say in my case, you're going to push this person over. You got to kill this person. Yeah. You know, and that goes into, let's go back to the not sing real fast too. You know, now that's obviously everyone's, you know, debating that where it's like, Oh, well the still Walker antagonize and blah, blah, blah. Everyone's saying their theories at the end of the day, it's still somebody who's suspended two, three feet off the ground who could die by falling over and hitting his head. Yeah. You know what I mean? And his, um, you know, it doesn't his matter jo- what, like his job as a clown is to get under your skin. You know what I mean? And it's like, sure. I, I'm pretty sure he was doing it to the, the, the extent of, where he can do it at, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He wasn't crossing the line or anything, and, and that's just his And job. the guest on the video is on, the guest is literally on his phone, so the guest is sitting like this, on his phone, chatting, and it's like, could you imagine just being on your phone so nonchalantly and kicking somebody and that person falling over and dying? And I know that sounds like extreme. But it's, it could happen. And, but it could happen. It could happen. Yeah. That's, uh, that's if, exactly if the point. If falling right? at, a, at a wrong uh, angle, yeah, yeah, yeah. you hit your head or something, it could happen. Yeah, I'm not I'm not even trying to make a joke out of this. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. this is serious. You it know, is, I know 100%. it sounds intense. It's like dead. But no, seriously. You 100%. Could, you could fall and crack your head open or something. You know what I'm saying? You got to be so careful. Yeah. And to do that, to touch, to touch a stilt is a serious offense. And it's a serious crime and needs to be addressed right away. So, And in the Knott's case, it doesn't matter what the scare actor did, even if he started it, I don't care. It's at the end of the day. The guest was kicking him and potentially could have killed somebody. Yeah. You know, whereas, okay, maybe the still walker stepped on his foot once. Who cares? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you, you could have killed this person. One's, one's much worse, you know what I mean? In the long run of it. So, yeah. Well, crazy stuff, man. But yeah, it's just awareness. Awareness. Beware, I'm know? glad I got to, to start this episode. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, we brought a little awareness because there was a lot of things that needed to be addressed, man. And, and, and they, I think I felt you were the right person to, to bring this up with. Yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah, and so let's let's turn the let's turn the tone a little bit. You know, yes. we got we got the serious stuff out of the way. Yes, let's you know, be aware. Yeah. Have fun. Yeah. You know, keep your eyes open. I always tell you, hey, keep your eyes open and keep moving. Yeah, if you can, 100%. if you can, because movement is life. The longer you're in someone's view, the more time they have to think about retaliating against you. So yeah. you keep moving, especially if you're in a scare zone. Don't stop moving, not even for a second. You got to keep going, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. If you're in a, in a maze or a house, it's great to interact with people, but try to, you know, you got to kind of suss it out. Am I in this person's face for too long? Maybe it's time to step back because if you stay in their face for too long, that's that gives them more chances to think about what to do. So that's my big advice to everybody out there. Movement is life. Yeah. So I told all the first year Fright Festers, I told everybody, if you're in a scare zone or somewhere where you can move, keep moving. Keep moving. Movement is life. It will save you from getting messed with. The moment you stop is the moment you start getting touched and prodded and everything. So, ah, yeah. Stuff. But yeah, let's, let's get to the fun stuff. Oh, yeah, this is serious. But let's, uh, cause I'm glad. Thanks for having me on the uh, podcast, man. It's super fun. Uh, glad I got to talk to you again. Yeah. I mean, round two. Yeah. I mean, the, the first time we did this yeah. was with Matt, and, and now yeah. it's, it's you, and uh, you got a new chapter in mm-hmm. your life that we couldn't quite talk about at the time, but now we can really talk about. Um, yeah and yes. i'm not i'm not like i'm not saying i knew this entire time i'm just saying he couldn't talk about it because universal is you know anybody who knows universal is is they sign ndas and whatnot and they keep you yeah. know the mazes and stuff secretive and whatnot which we completely respect it for the community because i want to be surprised when i show up to these events yeah. um you had the opportunity to spend a season at halloween horror nights Doing a lot that, of right? a, a lot of a couple of things, man. Break it down for us. How did that go? Mm-hmm. What was the the decision process to just go? Hey, you know, I'm gonna try something new yeah. this season. Boy, do I have a tale for you? Yes, I was so excited to tell this because I haven't really spoken about this too much. I've been meaning to like post about this or go to go live and to talk about this because I know a lot of people are interested in everything this season. It's been just the craziest. Uh, a time in my life. And I'm not exaggerating. This has been the hardest I've ever worked in my whole life. Um, and there's a reason for that. So so kind of here, here's, here's how the story goes. Now, when we talked last, I was kind of like, oh, anything could happen. I'm not sure we're going to end up next season. You know, Matt was still trying to figure out his 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 new work. Uh, that's for him to tell, obviously, uh, as most people have seen already. I mean, we've posted about this publicly. You know, Matt's not living in California anymore. He's living in Utah, um, excelling in this this new job that he has. He's doing so great. And obviously, he misses... California and us and, and the haunts out here and he wants to maybe try to see if he can come back for a haunt next year. He's, he's talking about maybe trying to 
maybe coming to join Horror Nights or doing a Han in California just to be around for this time of the year because he misses it and being with everybody. Um, he did get to come out briefly and visit me and watch me perform at Horror Nights, which was super cool, and to hang out with our family that's still here in California. But, you know, he's he's on his own path right now, so he's kind of figuring out his, you know, career and everything. So he's doing great. For me, here's how it kind of went for me, though. I, during the summer, really had no idea where I was going to go. Now, I had gone to the Horror Nights auditions in June. They were early June. I went um, and kind of, I mean, I, I'm not sure how long you want to go with this. I'll, I'll give a little bit of detail because it's a hilarious story. Keep it going. I went to this Horror Nights, cool. I went to this Horror Nights audition. Um, I can't really, once again, they. it's always NDA, NDA, everything. They don't want you talking too much about it. Um, super fun audition. I'll say that. Really fun. Um, I went to it, got through. Uh, I actually, so it was, it's in a, a ballroom, like it was in a hotel ballroom right over there by universal. And one of the parts of the, of the, um, obviously like it's a, it's a scare actor audition. So like, I'm not gonna say details, but you're going to be scaring during the audition, right? Like scaring dummies so and they stuff. get an idea just, of how you yeah. scare. Yeah. You're in front of a panel of judges. They want to see how you perform, how your character work is, you know, it's just your basic haunt. Audition stuff it happens everywhere. It was really fun when at Universal, you know, it was really fun. But I slipped because we're on carpet. My foot slipped <laughs> and I fell on the ground. I literally slid during this audition by accident and just cut both of my knees open. So that's how my haunt season started was by oh, nursing man. my knees back to health. So from like June through July, I had these massive scabs on both my knees like this big, like straight up this big and yeah, yeah, uh, the yeah. size of my ears on both my knees and um it was horrible and it was very painful but it was kind of a funny story you know i was like oh but i made it though it was super fun you know and i was like oh cool you know i got through the horror nights audition super fun um i've been to a few auditions for universal over the years um i haven't really ever gotten anything so it's kind of cool to finally like oh here receive the golden ticket here's the next process here's the next stage it's like oh how fun and the cool thing is they're really accommodating about like they're really specific about here are our tentative dates for the event the tentative times like kind of trying to feel out, do you have any days you want to request off? Like, how's it looking and stuff like right after you get through the audition, they're really clear about their expectations, which I, I really appreciated. Right. Um, and uh, uh, so that was pretty cool, you know, and I, I had mentioned, yeah, hey, so here's the other fun thing is right before the auditions for that, I had applied at uh, Warner Brothers, obviously, right? So a lot of people know I work at Warner Brothers as tour guide. You obviously came on one of my tours once. All right, Anthony. So it's pretty fun. You that know, that's a, a fun, fun story for another time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, good time. Ex-wife, everything. A uh, lot of things. Works. <laughs> Maybe a shoot the shit episode in the future. We'll see. Maybe yes, definitely, definitely. Um, but I just applied for their full-time position there. Uh, hadn't been told if I got it or not, but just knew it was on my radar. Right. I was like, either way, it's cool. If I get it, great. I get a full-time job. If I don't, that's okay. I'll have more time for a haunt or fun October activities. Right. Win-win. Either way, could go either way. Um. So yeah, I was like kind of telling them a little bit how my work schedule was. They were cool with it. Okay. Some time passes. Um, so then I find out, okay, yeah, obviously you got the part for Horror Nights. but And then the Stilt Audition is coming around. That was early July. So I'm getting ready for the Stilt Audition. Um, spoiler alert, obviously, you've probably seen. I'm already wearing the hat and everything. <laughs> yeah, Stilting, a lot of fun. I'll get into that in a second. Um, so going to the Stilt Audition, uh, right before I went to the stilt audition, about a couple days before, I was brought into the office and told that I had gotten the full-time position at Warner Brothers, which is fantastic. Um, again, love that company. Love the studio. Hashtag uh, brought back the Snyderverse. <laughs> yeah. They're working on it. Go see Black Adam. It's a yes. fun one. I got to see it. Uh, it's a really good one. So. Not sponsored. Um, not sponsored. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I just there, advocate but, you know. that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I enjoyed it. I had a fun time. You know, I love talking movies. I'll give my honest review. I'm not, I'm not biased any place, even if I worked there, but it was a good time. I, I, I had fun watching it. You know, it's a good, it was a pretty fun time. So, um, but yeah, you know, I'm saying Warner Bros. Great place to work. Super excited. Great. Go to the Silt Audition. I already feel I'm pretty confident. Um, the Stilt Audition was a blast. Once again, I don't want to, uh, uh, talk too much about what was the details of it. Um, but it was also very, very fun. If you like doing stilts, it's great. Um, I guess that you can say they they do let you get up on stilts for the audition, which is super neat. So if you anyone out there listening wants to go to this audition in the future, you will be moving around on stilts. So prepare yourself for that. It's just you know, it's just once again, they want to see how you perform, how your character work is, how you're doing on stilts. 
Stilt edition. I also fell during the stilt edition. <laughs> two for two there, Nate. Two for two. I know. I know. Right. Um, yeah, it was a bummer. Um, you're, I was on pretty slick floor and I was jumping around. Um, you know, I was just trying to go, just trying to be aggressive because that's what they're looking for. They're looking for fast movement. They're looking for aggressive aggression and, and, and technical skill. Right. So trying to show them that. Um, but yeah, it worked out. It worked out. Right. I was a little nervous at first. I was like, oh man, I fell, but they're like, do you want to continue? I was like, yes, please. Cause you know, it's all about how you fall, right? You got to fall in the right way. Right. Now that we're talking about stilts and falling, obviously. Uh, both Six Flags and Universal now both have uh, fall testing and fall certification and fall training um, in their their still training manuals, basically. So when you're training, you have to get up on your stilts. Um, they, they'll bring out a pad, both at Universal and at Six Flags, just how it is. And they, they make you practice falling and practice falling. And you fall a couple times just to get used to it. Like I said, it's not that big of a deal if you're doing it correctly. Yeah. You can fall a million times and be totally fine. You can keep getting up every single time. It's all about how you do it, right? You tuck in, you cover, you roll nice and easy. You land on your side. Don't stick out your arms. Cover your head, right? Make sure your head's not getting bopped around. And you could you could do it 30, 40 times a night, and, and you'd, you'd be fine. But I fell. Obviously, I've, I'm trained how to still walk. I've been doing stilts for years now, over at Six Flags for four years or so now, right? Three or four years. I can't remember. Yeah, you but did for a, a while. Not for, for, and not just not for, for Fright Fest, not, but uh, Christmas and stuff. Holiday in the Park, yeah. uh, summertime, the Holiday in the Park drive through event that we had in 2020 over at, at Six Flags Magic Mountain. So, you know, I have a good amount of, of stilt, you know, and I've done some gigs outside as well, you know, and some stuff. On top of it being on hills, around. too. Yeah. That's a, also a challenge of its own. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of funny. Um, you know, I've I've still walked people where they go, oh, hills, hills. I'm like, she should see Six Flags. Yeah, that's dude. like, that's all <laughs> hills. <laughs> yeah, literally. So. So, yeah, so, but, you know, I, I did fall during the audition. Um, it was okay. I fell appropriately, you know, very light, got back up, finished the audition, was a little nervous. Uh, but they don't tell you right away. They go, well, we'll, we'll tell you later on. So, um, so yeah, and then I was like, okay, so I guess I, I know I have this full-time spot now, so I'm trying to figure that out. Um, orientation rolls around for, for Horror Nights, and they, they told me where I was going to be. So, um, yes, they do tell you basically most of the stuff that's going to be at the event or you kind of overhear other people talking about it right from the people in the editor in your orientation group so i had a good idea of most of the stuff was like a little bit before the, the last parts the last like three or four mazes in the terror tram was even released so i knew i was gonna be on terror tram i knew what the theme was i knew what my character was but you obviously once again you sign tons of paperwork you're under ndas you know they're very strict about it. don't talk about it don't post about it you know, and as it is, it's kind of cool. You know, you're kind of in the know. It's kind of fun. You know, it feels really cool. Like I will say, Universe is very professional to, to work for. For my, for my, it's the closest uh, you're ever gonna feel to ever feeling yeah. what it look, works like in Marvel Studios. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly, Marvel <laughs> Studios. So, um, but it was cool. So I was like, you know, and then I got, I read my paper, you know, and it said, you know, now obviously we all know what it is. So I could talk about it, but I read it and it was like Terra Tram, Hollywood Harry's Halloween, um character name skeleton biker daddy stilt number two and i was like oh. i read the stilt part i was like oh i remember, I remember just jumping around uh, they were they're laughing i was like jumping around i was like yes you know because i wasn't sure i had fallen during the audition i was like oh who knows who knows this is like two to three weeks later now probably like two weeks later and i found out so i was like got it so super exciting stuff but um so that was kind of how it lit up and then even still i was like okay but i'm still not sure if i'll be able to swing both jobs you know so I'd have a lot of discussions both with Universal, with my supervisors, and then with my scheduling team over at Warner Brothers and kind of going back and forth and back and forth trying how, to work how out. Nuts. It kind of sounds like you're working at the, like the studios as like a director. You're like, I have to talk to both to get rights for something. Like Dude, uh literally, I literally like like I I'm not exaggerating when I'm saying this was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. <laughs> balance both jobs both at studios too i am proud of myself yeah literally going from one studio to the other and you could literally see i park in the parking garage at warner brothers and i'm looking up and i could see yeah universal, you can see universal. and you can you can see h lot and curious george and which is which is where we go to like check in for me at least that's where i would go to clock in right and right below curious george is h lot where you have the halloween and the scarecrow mazes and you could literally see the giant black tent that Scarecrow's is in from the parking structure of Warner Brothers. So every day I'm parking, I'm looking up at Universal Studios. And then later on that day, I'm driving up the hill and I'm walking down to clock in 
and I'm looking down at Warner Brothers from the other side. It just kind of worked out for you in the trippy. long run, though. It's kind of trippy. It did. It did. It did. It, it's just crazy. And you want to know what really helped, too, is, you know, shout out once again to the Warner Brothers scheduling team. I don't think they're ever going to listen to this, but somebody in the scheduling team of Warner Brothers has done Horror Nights for about six years. Nice. And she hooked it up. She was able to help me out a whole lot. So she was able to help me work my schedule. So I'd be able to do both because she knows how it, how it works. Right? right. She kind of had an inside look. So that made it really helpful. So basically how it ended up working out. And I'm not exaggerating. This is, this is real time frames. I would show up at Warner Brothers around 745 AM. I'd work from about 745 or 8 to about 430 PM. I would check out from Warner Brothers. I would change in the locker room into just my athletic wear that I'd wear to Horror Nights that night, would jump in my car, would drive up the hill, I would check in at Universal by 5 o'clock, and then I'd work until whatever time. Generally, I would get out of Universal around 1 to 1.30 a.m. because Terratram closes early. Another reason that why was, this is all possible. That was luck. That, right there, that was a good one. It was. It was. It was clutch. It's funny, too, because you know there a lot of people were like, everyone loves it. Everyone I worked with loved the Terratram, but they're the only thing, the only complaint i think i heard all year was just oh man i wish that we had more hours like sometimes it may yeah. get more hours so that was the only thing but i was like i'm fine i i am doing this mainly for fun yeah. and i enjoy it and i'm working on my stilt skills but i'm just gonna go home and go to sleep because what they'll do is they'll give you the option to if they have openings in some in some of the houses you can go after terry tram is over and to go work in one of the houses as well Right. If there's an opening and you fit the character, you have to like do a costume fitting real fast, but they'll take you so you can, you can kind of fill in, which is super fun. So again, this is kind of an advertisement. Hey, if you're going to work at universal, super cool. They're really cool about letting you try out a few different spots and, and get you more experience too. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's fun. Like, like I know people are going to be asking me, I'm sure people are going to be asking me, Hey, what do you like better? Universal Fright Fest, Universal Fright Fest. I, I, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. Um, well, you, had not your, yet. you had your, but to be fair too, You've had your fair share of moments at Fright Fest. A lot of them, you're making new moments at, at Halloween Horror Nights. So there's like not even really choosing. It's like you had a great first year for Horror Nights. You had an outstanding oh, totally. career at Six Flags. Now you're you know you're you're starting your career at Horror Nights with a with a, with a great start. So it's just like if every year continues yeah. to get better and you get to be at different places and try new things, like yeah oh totally it's it's kind of fun you know you want to be a multi-tool i i always really didn't think of myself as one character i've said this time and time again there's a reason i don't really have character names as much anymore you know especially once i became the clown it was kind of just me and yeah we had like the exile bros that's why people recognize us right because we used to be on exile hill but but we liked looking at ourselves not as like scares but we were entertainers you know what i mean that's that's what I, that's what my passion. That's what my career is. I, I work for entertainment. I do events. Yeah. Right. I work at Warner Brothers Entertainment, and I do stuff there. Now I'm I'm working at events, and I you know what I'm saying. I'm always trying to do entertainment, even if it's not Halloween. I mean, Halloween's my favorite time of year. Halloween events, performing as a Halloween a character for a haunt, favorite thing to do. But I enjoy other events as well. Holiday events, summertime events. I love it. I just love working at entertainment events. It's so much fun, right? And seeing people's reaction to stuff you create being part of the show. It's just, it's just, that's, that's what my passion is. So I, I am like Nate, the entertainer, right? That's kind of how I look at it. I like kind of expanding my, my, my roster a little bit and being able to expand my experiences and my skill set. So it's right. kind of fun. So totally different. We had like a dynasty at Fright Fest, right? Like, I don't want to sound like cocky or anything, but we had built this whole program up, right? We had really been a big factor in like creating things like the show, for example, right? Like that was kind of like our brainchild for years. Um, my brother and I were kind of the spearhead behind Six Flags going to Sliders of the Night, right? Uh, uh, Hell at the Harbor back in 2017. Yeah, yeah. Like we we were kind of, we even were creating gear for the park. Me and my brother were working on like making slider gear and helping out with that. And we we're helping out the slider certifications and the trainings. And uh, we even got into tech work near the end of our time at, at, at Six Flags. And we we're helping out with like striking and building sets and stuff. So it's like, we really created a lot and helped out a lot. Um, you know what I mean? And so it's, as much as it was sad to leave that and I'm always going to miss that place, you know, and the people there, cause there's still some really great people, which is why I always say, go support the event or go work it. It's so much fun. It's kind of fun for me as well to kind of try some new things and to get some new experiences under my belt, you know, work for a new company, make some new connections, you know, 
That's kind of nice. It's just, just kind of expand your roster a little bit. Oh, yeah. And to do something I've never done before, like I've been on stilts for countless hours, but I've never scared on stilts before. It's my first time scaring while on stilts. I've, I've performed on it, taken photos, and been a character, but never been a scary character, you know? So that was new. On top of that, um, this is no secret. Universal has really, really nice stilts, right? Um, Six Flags uses pretty good quality ones, but they, they're, they're just using drywall stilts, like your, your, your standard articulating drywall stilts, which are good for a myriad of things, right. including, you know, construction work, painting, performing, you could do a lot with it. Um, and they're, they're good. They work well, but we're using stilts that are about, you know, literally 10 times as expensive. Not, that's not, and that's not an exaggeration. Wow. That's like 10 times as expensive. Upgrade over at universal you're using nicer equipment you know they have a bigger budget that once again no secret because this is this is not what I, I i guess what i'm trying to say is my my review of, of working at either place is not i don't want it to be like a slam of another place you know what i mean like i love six flags and i love fright fest and i think it's a great event and there's some awesome people working there and it's so much fun to work right like you said you saw the silly nate stuff that's so funny but that's kind of stuff i'll probably never be able to do if I work at Universal, right? Like just kind of having my own character and having that creative freedom. So that's what I'm saying. If you want like some talking fun and creative freedom, go to Fright Fest, right? Go to like somewhere like that. Um, it's a lot different. You know what I mean? So I'm not trying to slam the place. I love Fright Fest, but just like obviously Universal has a bigger budget, right? Everyone knows Universal has a massive budget. So the equipment you're using is nice. Uh, the facilities you're working with are really nice, right? The attractions they have are, are nice as well, like the mazes and the experiences, right? Because they have a lot of money get put into it. And that's, and that again is no secret. That's not really me trying to slam any one place. It's just the facts and everybody knows it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody knows it. Like who has a bigger budget? Universal. Every day, every, every year. Yep. (laughs) There's just, there's just no question about it. So it's interesting being able to use these nicer equipment and this nicer stuff on top of the fact that I was already, you know, working for a new environment. So that was fun. Now here's the other thing too, is that some of these, some of these guys on the still team I'm working with are just some of the most talented people I've ever met. It is insane. I, I've seen some stuff on stilts. That I just was, when I first watched it, I was like, what am I looking at? There's some stuff I saw out there that I'm still trying to figure out how I did it. And it's so fun. Like, here's a great example. You're ready for this. I saw a stilt walker this year, walk up towards a guest, drop down all the way to the floor, like literally go to the ground, crawl at the person to scare them and then just immediately just stand back up on their stilts and then just keep going. I don't think I've ever seen that. I haven't either. <laughs> I, you Nate, could have told me this Nate, six months you, ago. I said, that's impossible. Nate, you and tricks have a lot to, to learn now. <laughs> well, that's literally what I said too. I, I see, I, I was watching stuff like that and people doing, you know, like I, I know I'm a good still walker. I'm very confident in my own abilities, especially after this season. I've, I learned a lot. I grew a lot in my own abilities. I learned so much and, I just feel like it's like a night and day difference, like looking at videos from me in the beginning of the run versus me at the last weekend. But still, I have so much to learn compared to some of these these people I'm learning from. And that's so cool. Like for me, I love that because that means it kind of sets my bar a little higher. Yeah. I, I can continue growing. I continue learning stuff if I continue down this route of learning how to still walk better. So it's really cool. There's still more to learn. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, it's so fun. I mean, sliding's always kind of been that way as well as far as some of these big tricks go. Um, I stopped trying to really pursue big, big tricks because I was just trying to save my body, you know, but this is a little different. I, I feel like there's a lot of stuff I could still learn and do on stilts as well. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not comfortable yet with the level I'm at and I want to keep continuing learning how to how to still walk that's better cool. and learning some new. I mean, that, exactly. That's, you know, that's that's one it's thing, fun. too. It's, it's great. It's like a great experience. You know, you just talked about that guy doing crawling on the floor and then getting back up it, it, for those who don't know in the terror tram especially where where nate was that was not a it's not a big area it, it's like no. it's it's a it's a good enough area to 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 have people flow through and the end and, and you guys do your thing but it's not a big area like you're on a path you're like passing by the 747 from war of the worlds and it's like it is yeah. nuts to so to, to, to even think about someone <laughs> doing that in that little space it's yeah. insane. It was a break. It was a break in the crowd. And the, the dude that did it too um, was a veteran of over 10 years. Wow. I want to say doing it for a while. Um, 
very, very, very talented guy. So talented, not just in stilts, but in a lot of things he does. Uh, very talented, very genuine, good dude. I, you know, like I said, like I, I, I can't say enough nice things about these people that I worked with. Like seriously, it taught me so much, especially this guy. Um, great guy. There was a break in the crowd, and he he wasn't down there all the time on Terry Tram. He was just filling in for a night for fun. Yeah. So, like I said, like because they were pretty cool about switching us around to try some new stuff out. So he was just filling in for a night. We had a, we had a spot opening. Um, one of the the skeleton bikers that I was with was. Uh, out for that night for whatever reason he had, he had a requested day off and so he's like oh, i want to fill in so he just came down filled in and we were just having fun and i was kind of watching him perform and kind of following him around and just trying to keep pace and learning some new stuff you know and it was cool because that, that guy and i have known each other for a little bit over a year now we never got to perform together before so it was kind of wow. cool we're going to finally perform them um and then yeah he goes he goes hey watch this and there was a break in the crowd so there was like about you know, a 20 foot gap between us and the people walking towards us. So that's yeah. when he did it. And I was just like, Pfft. we get backstage and I was like, do it. I want to watch it. Do it again. I took a video of it. So I'll send you the video later. Oh man. <laughs> that's video awesome. Yes. <laughs> I was like, I got to see it again. Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> I want to watch. <laughs> You're like for my own enjoyment. So, cool. so, but with that being said, um, the hardest thing I've ever done though, um, because you know, you're, 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 you're physically exhausted. Everyone knows haunts are physically exhausting. Um, universal is like I said, big budget. So sometimes there's doubles, sometimes even triples of characters, right? A lot of people ask, hey, why do I see two of some one person sometimes? That's because they're, they're swapping out, right? Which is cool because then you as a performer get to go take your breaks and you get to go rest while you still have your character still out there performing. You know what yeah. I mean? So that's one thing. It's cool because there's always somebody out there. So it's like no matter when you come through my area, you're going to see my character out there. Might not be me, but it will be somebody performing in that that spot the other side of that is you know what i'm saying look back at fright fest you look at any any photo of clowns and you see that big bright blue clown walking around blue the clown it was me every time yeah there's never a time where that wasn't me so that that's also cool so it depends you know what i'm saying there's there's pros and cons there's pros and cons of both you know what i mean but once again in my current position this was better for me you know what i mean yeah especially that, with that, everything going on in your life Correct. That's why I chose Horror Nights. That's why I didn't go back to Fright Fest. I was asked to come back to Fright Fest as like a lead this year, you know, or something along those lines to help out behind the scenes. Right. Um, you know, and it was a very big honor to be asked that, but I respectfully declined just because, you know, I just didn't think it'd work out with me trying to work and then drive all the way up to Santa Clarita. But Warner Brothers, I can get from Warner Bros to Universal and parked in about 15 minutes, you know, just right, right up the street, right around the corner. So it made it doable for me to get there because I had about a 30 minute window to get there. Each and then day. for you, home wasn't too bad either. So, I mean, no, and I and live I was, around the corner. Yeah, so, so about at night with no traffic, five minutes home and I would just shower and just so go to like, sleep. And I called wise, it my big four. Yeah. Where everything kind of intercepted from where you started <laughs> to where you went to work to where you went to work again to where you finished. It was all kind of like in a circle for you. Kind of. I was working. I was averaging about 16 hour days, 16 hours. Wow. each day wow. um yes so i would get home and shower and then even though i was tired you know you're kind of you're scaring people and you're just kind of like shaking a little bit right so it takes you a second to kind of wind down to relax to go to bed yeah and i would average about four hours of sleep five if i was lucky but usually it'd be, it'd be anywhere from three and a half to four i called it my big four so I would go home, I would get my four hours of sleep, I'd wake up, I'd do it again. Now, this is something, like I said, I'm so proud of myself, Like, and I don't need to hear from anybody else. Like, I am proud of myself for doing this. I just cannot believe, Like, looking back at it, like reflecting, like I'm still processing what, what had happened this year. I would wake up after four hours of sleep and running around all night on, on your stilts, right? So my hips, my calves, like everything's like kind of kind of sore, and you're like, oh man, I gotta go to work and stand, and do a tour and be like, blah, 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 like talking all day or working in, in inside where I'm kind of helping people get to where they need to be, you know, and, and helping inside the, you know, the tour building as well. Right. And I'm just like, I'm going to be standing for eight hours now, you know, and yeah, I'll have my breaks and yeah, I'll have my, you know, my lunch and stuff, but I'm going to be standing up working again. <laughs> and then guess what? Right. Have you ever gotten to a shift at work where you're like, oh man, I'm exhausted, but okay, at least when I'm done, I'm going to go home and I'm going to go to sleep. Yeah, every, every I couldn't do that. Yep. I couldn't even stop for food. I couldn't even stop for food after work. I would leave work. I would get changed as fast as I could. And I would get in my car and drive straight to Universal and clock in. When I could rest was after my first set. 
at Universal. Shit. That was that was my rest time. That was my rest time because you know you get there, you check in, you get your costume, you go down. We have a pre we call pre shift meetings every every night. We we do ours over by the Psycho House. It's kind of fun, right? That's right in awesome. front of like the actual Psycho House, you know. And all the the chair tram actors, so all the you know the nope stuff and people from Bates Motel because we we were we were kind of separated in the four different sections, right? You right. had like Bates Motel, Psycho House, War of the World set, and then uh, um, the Jordan Peele section. So. We'd all meet up. They'd do the pre-shift. They would go over announcements, you know, show notes, little things, um, do shout outs, you know, fun stuff, kind of hype us up a little bit. And then we get off and it'd be like, all right, we have about 15 ish to 20 minutes before the, f- the first set needs to go out. So, you know, people will get ready. I would start getting ready. You go out in your first set. You're done. Oh, I would come off my set. Now I could rest. I have, you know, 45 minutes to an hour now to, to lay down before my next set. So then that's when I would finally get to lay down and kind of go, uh, but it's fun. You know, haunts are fun. You're out there with your friends, you're meeting people, you're talking. So I'm like, hubba, 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 hubba. I, I got lucky too, right. To get put with tricks as well in the terror tram. Oh my God. On, on, yes. on the same set as me, there is, Three people. There's three guys. There's three girls, and her and I got put together on the beast on the B cast on, on on still two. So we were literally working together, which is crazy. How how what what a coincidence is that? We her and I were so jazzed when we found out. We were so excited, and I'm sure she'll talk about it a little bit too. I don't know how much she wants me to say about her experience, but it was great. Now throughout the event, her and I got moved, but for the first like three weeks, every single set we got to go out together. It was just so cool. It doesn't it doesn't work out better. It was so funny. We came from the same event together over to this one and then now we got to perform this one together too and on top of that as well um you know what's hilarious is the other girl the girl that was uh one of the other uh, biker mamas that were down there also had done fright fest in the past and the other biker mama who was on cast a is another close personal friend of mine who i've also worked at at fright fest for years is that the one that you called your ex-wife no, uh, no, no, no. That was someone else. We'll that talk was about just that. one of the. Uh, that was yes, that was just one of the uh, on the ground uh, biker gang girls. That was her. Uh, but so funny because it's just like so. All three of the bike, the stilt biker mamas, were people who have have at the in the past worked at Fright Fest. Who I who I know, right? Like tricks and the other one I was talking about. I've been friends with for years, years and years and years and years. Just crazy. And now here we are, all working at. This event it all comes full circle, my friend on in the same break space. Right. Like, and then performing together too. Cause we, we'd swap sometimes, you know, like I would go out with a cast, they'd switch with E and then blah, 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 blah. Right. Just so we can all have fun and just mess around with each other. You know what I mean? Crazy. How, like how good of a situation. That's what I'm saying. Like things, sometimes things just work out for a reason, right? Sometimes you feel like you got to force it to happen, but sometimes things just work out. And this is one of those cases. If it didn't all work out this way, there's no way I would be able to do this, right? Like, think about it. I was able to, even though I was not getting any sleep, I was in the one position at Horror Nights that gets out a little early, right? I was able to get appropriate rest time while at Horror Nights because of the way the, the casting works, right? That, that was just done flawlessly. So shout out to the casting team for that. Yep, yep. And I was also able to perform with like some close personal friends of mine, like that I already knew before the event even started. I don't even know. Even though I'm at a new place. You can, you can do this with a million other people and the odds of that happening to that same person are very, like, can you believe very, that? Very, very can you believe I, I couldn't believe it. That's what I'm saying. I, I just couldn't believe it. So it's just like, and that's what I'm saying. This, the season was just something else. It's crazy. It's just so so crazy. I'm not just playing that up. It's just like I, I'm. Let's say I'm still processing. That's why I haven't really posted anything or talked about it because I'm still trying to process things. That's why I was excited to do this. This is like the first time I really get to like get the discuss this with somebody. Yeah, I discuss it with somebody. Exclusive. I'm proud. Of yeah, that. yeah. Because I'm just like so. I'm still trying to process the season, man. There's so much, and there's still more. I'm still going. There's still more to the story. Oh yeah. So if you want to butt in for questions, feel free. But there's, there's more. I mean, dude, do you want me to keep going? Before we get any further, because we did bring up something that's that's infamous yes. that that I got introduced to for them is, is the, the, <laughs> the joke of the ex-wife. It's been yes. ongoing for since the day I met you guys. Um, you've done it a lot at Fright Fest because there was many, many opportunities where it was just like you could throw it out there, no problem. You know, then I was like, can he get away with it on other things? And he he did. Um, you know, he he very appropriately 
uh, fitted in the studio tour, which was very funny. And that was very, I mean, he did it in the most <laughs> professional and appropriate way. That was just a regular joke, and I love it. Oh, my goodness. Um, and then the Horror Nights one. Yeah. The 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 absolute, if anyone knows <laughs> Horror Nights, y- you're not really allowed to talk no. at all, unless you have no. somewhat no, of a no, speaking no. role or something, but... That's very, very rare. unlikely. Yeah, very yeah. rare. You're going to be lipping a lot of things pretty much or just mm-hmm. kind of be doing movements to act like you're talking. But like the closest I'll let you do is like, dude, like for instance, like the trick or treaters, like they were given permission to like laugh. Right. Or say trick or treat, for example, you know, like very limited things. That, right. that was about it. That was about the extent they're talking. You know, they can make little sounds and stuff. Yeah. But it's, and it's kind of fun in a way. You know, I, I didn't know if I'd like it coming from Fright Fest where it was kind of just like, yeah, it's the wild west do whatever you want you know have fun <laughs> you have fun with your character because you're having fun people are having fun right that's kind of how fright fest is uh coming from that over to to this where it's kind of like no 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 i wasn't sure i was gonna like it at first but it is kind of fun because you, you got to kind of be creative a little bit you know so it is very creative in its own way because you got to kind of be creative on how to like do things and how to do character work while not being able to like talk you know you can only gesture gesture do things to like get your point across it's right. kind of fun yeah. So I wasn't sure either how I was going to get my ex-wife across. You got it across, man. I mean, I yeah. I, I was walking <laughs> through. I, was that opening night or was that the second night that mm. I came through? I think it might have been the that second That was night. the night it rains. That was the second night. So I was grounded. That's I was grounded. So obviously grounded. when it rains, I mean, this is this is just a, uni- uni- <laughs> a universal thing. No, not Universal mm-hmm. Studios. It's just a still wide thing. Anywhere you're doing stilts. Obviously, if it rains, it gets slippery. If it gets slippery, it's dangerous, so you don't go out on your stilts. Yeah. Six Flags is just like this. If it's too windy or rainy, you come down. Same thing Universal, too knots. windy or rainy. Same thing with knots. Anywhere you go, right? Because yeah. it's just safe for the performers. It's safety. Uh, we do have – yeah, we have grounded costumes. So when we weren't able to go up on our stilts, I had a pair of pants that were just my size of pants and then like boots, right, like character boots. And then, um, yeah. And, uh, we'd, we'd go out on the ground. So I had to do that a few times this year. I did it on a few occasions. So, uh, but yeah, opening Saturday, uh, Friday, opening Friday, yeah. second, second night we were open. Unfortunately it rained, right. Which is just the worst timing, but it rained on that Saturday. The other thing too, is that certain masks, depending on how they were made with the hair and stuff, they didn't want them getting wet right? right? They, to preserve it. Since, especially since it was so early on in the event, they wanted to keep everything as fresh as possible. Right we had so much more to go so they were being really careful with it but you came through right at the perfect time i, I was able to go out grounded yeah. and run around and scare people on foot which is funny oh it was um, hilarious dude i i i walked through <laughs> and um i forget what what happened someone said something and i and i set it up i'm like yeah hey, yeah he reminds me of, of my ex-wife you know and and all of a sudden i turn around you're right in front of me and the first person you look at and you just point. And I was like, yeah. Wow. He got away with so it all talking. <laughs> he did it. Because all the masks, all achievement yeah. unlocked, all the masks were pretty much the same for my area. So you got the bikers, right? We're, yeah. the, we're the skeleton biker gang. Yeah. Uh, you have your biker daddies, your biker mamas who are up on stilts. Then you had your female bikers and your male bikers who were just on the ground, right? Right. Um, we all had the same mask. It was a skull face, had a big gray bushy beard with a gray mustache and like long gray hair. Uh, the female ones had uh, a skull face with like long gray hair that was put into like braids, right? Right. On the sides. Um, and there was some that were on the ground. The, the, the braids were for the biker mamas on stilts. The other biker mama, or just the, the, the female bikers, had just like, the long flowing hair. Um, the girl that I said that to, she's awesome. Um, she's like a, 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 a Roomba instructor, too, and is like a dancer. And it's very talented scare. She's, she's awesome. But she she would always like flip her hair around and stuff, too. So it's funny because I'm walking away. And I remember you saying, like, hey, where's your ex-wife? And I look over and I see her doing her, her character bit where she's like flipping her hair around, you know, with her like long gray hair. And I just remember just pointing and being like, over here. <laughs> I, 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 I just, just want to know if she was confused afterwards. Like, why would you point at me? It's like a mm. joke. I should, she thought it was very funny. Yeah, I, I told her. I told her the whole bit. She goes, oh, that's, she goes oh, "That's so funny. That's so hilarious." Yeah. If only you know, so. like I said, I, I I wasn't sure if you were gonna be able to do it because you couldn't talk. But we figured uh, out. A, we always figure out a way. I think we do. There's it's a will. Just, there's a way. It's, it's make it happen. It's destiny, bro. <laughs> it's like it's destiny. Yeah. Oh man. I mean, that's so. I mean, because 
outside of doing the terror tram, you had other opportunities to move around yes. and kind of get to experience other things and, and how they do. Yes. Like, for mm -hmm. example, mazes over there. Do you want to talk a little bit about some of the other things you were involved in? The terror tram was yeah, yeah, yeah. one of my favorites this year, but I'd love to hear some other stories Ooh. you were involved with. Terror tram, I'm just going to say it. We were the highest rated terror tram. Nice. Of all time. Congrats. That, of all time. I have to say, I mean, that Hollywood Harry section, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Hollywood Harry. I think yes, I a think lot of people are. A lot of people are. So badly, I think that, you know, they got icons on Orlando's. We should have Hollywood legends, and he should be the first inductee of that. Should. They should have Hollywood Harry Mays. That'd be fun. Yes. Or he needs to, he needs um, to be the, the icon of the event one year or something. And getting getting to see the details on the costume, too, is fun. Like, they have, like, the, they have like old universal name tags, employee what? pin, name yeah. tags. Such a cool costume design, too. And the masks up close are so scary. Like, getting to see them, um, which is so funny because all the Harrys, too, they're really great dudes um, and girls. People that were playing the Hollywood Harrys, nice. great, great performers. So, um, really nice. So, um, a lot yeah. of friends I made. And then, and just then you so got cool. the, the Nope section. I mean, that was a yeah. Mind the Nope section was awesome. That was just like for me to just see that movie that summer and then actually get to walk in those sets and they're kind of reliving a new tale. Yeah, the tethered and yeah. watch them do their bit where they're looking up. It's like, uh, and they freaking cross over three movies back. right there, man. I mean, some yeah. we had someone even doing the, the cup from get out get and out. stuff. And I was like, great Easter egg, right? A little there. bit on the nose, but love yeah. it. Yeah. It was funny. Awesome. Um, no, that was cool. That was a cool little finale. Um, I love classic Halloween, like spooky things too. So to be cast at the Hollywood Harry's like Halloween party is like, Oh, it was so fun. I loved it. I was like, I, I was, so jazzed because like i can't believe like i got to be a part of like this this one channel so you know what i'm saying because like there's so many other things could have been like, the purge could have been like whatever it's been so many things over the years but it was right. like fun halloween themed thing you know but so great it was fun uh, my girlfriend's wearing a terry tram shirt right now how fun is that <laughs> she's like terry tram represent <laughs> terry tram merch terry tram merch terry um but yeah no that's that was like super super cool so like i i loved it i obviously walked through the terror tram you know a bunch of times, 20 times, 25 times, just on my breaks. Yeah. Most nights I would just go and take a little walk, watch everybody, the chainsaw guys and go through the Bates Motel area and see everybody. It's so fun. The Nope sections are really, really cool. Um, but yeah, highest rated terror tram. You, I did get to move around. So here's the thing. There's obviously certain characters have priorities as far as um, certain uh, roles. Right. Right. Now there was six of us on the terror tram. A lot of stilt walkers. You don't really need that many people on there. It was great when we were fully casted, when we had, you know, we were supposed to have a biker mom, a biker daddy out of all times together. So a guy and a girl. And there's, you know, three sets that you're always rotating in. But oftentimes we get pulled to different positions. Um, and that purely was based off of like want. Like if you're like, I really want to try this, really want to try this. But also to um, uh, costume fitting, right? So the costume kind of had to fit. Because if you're only filling in for a night or two, they don't want to make major alterations because they want the other person to be able to go back and, and use their right. costume. 100%. Um, I fit into um, all three of the performers' costumes from the, the weekend maze, After Hours Nightmare. So I fit in all three of their costumes for the four-legged toad stilt it's terrifying and right there. and i became kind of one of their main swings a, a lot of people did that role got to a lot of the still walkers got to be in there but i was in there at least like seven or eight times throughout the run nice so a good amount so i was in there that was like my second home kind of i like to look at it i got to do it quite a bit so i got pretty familiar with that house and that uh that role and it was a fun one uh, i love that that was a great one of my favorites this year i mean it, it's a tough one because this is like one of the best years I've seen, and this is not my this is not me being biased. I work there. I go to this event every year, and I go through every maze and every house multiple times. Uh, and I did the same this year. Obviously, it was a little different because I was working it, so I got to go through things at different times, and you know, I got to go through everything multiple times since you know they they would allow me to go through things every once in a while. Right. But I loved it. It was one of the best years I've seen from Horror Nights in a long. Long time. I, I have to definitely Everything agree was, because yeah. uh, twenty nine or twenty sixteen for me was the last time like Horror Nights had a really peak year. Like that was like the absolute yeah. banger year. And then this for me was my favorite year I think since two thousand eleven. Two thousand eleven was not good saying, too. Yeah, I love two thousand eleven. Two thousand twelve was really fun. Yeah. Um, not saying they had not. I mean, they've had good stuff throughout the years as well. But I think just. As a whole event, I think this is like the best, one of the best years I've ever had. 
Well, and and this year, and this was going for all the haunts across the board, but it's like this was the comeback year. Like this was the year that, like after totally. after like we had that soft opening to see if this will work in in a pandemic setting. Can we do it again next year at a much larger scale? And they did. They came back. They put a lot of work into these mazes to story tell and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I mean, you had a lot of good originals come to the event. Some stuff that came over from Orlando Great that originals. we've never seen. You know, that was really cool. Some awesome. Not a whole lot of black walls. No, not at all. It? And and and, yeah. and I think the worst Great I had stuff. it was in 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 Universal Monsters. But other than that. Not a yeah. lot, you know. And like, you want to know it's kind of funny too, is like is that was supposed to be like a secret passage too. So it was supposed to kind of be a thing where it was dark. Oh, okay. Which is funny. And also, you know, now again I'm getting all this inside look at stuff and I'm trying to think of how much I'm allowed to say, but I'm sure this is okay to say that little black hallway area was right next to a character access point that many characters use to get in and out of where they needed to be. So there wasn't really a whole lot they could do with that space anyways. So once I found that out, I was like, oh, eh, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm okay with it. It's like in in theme, quote unquote. But yeah, but yeah I, I would agree. Little to no black walls. There was a few, but not very many. Um, great theming, great fun properties as well. Both IPs and originals. A lot of original stuff, which I love. I know. It's like every year we're leaning and, closer uh, and closer to more original. And but, one thing I will point out is not a whole lot of repetitive scares, which usually Universal is victim of. Just repetition, repetition, repetition. There felt like there was a lot of unique hides and and gags in a lot of these mazes this year, which is kind of I fun. I mean, so. you know me, dude. I was the biggest, biggest hater for a weekend to come. I was. I'll yeah. straight up say that. And I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just not, I've never, yeah, and, and, I, and I'll continue to say it, I'm not a fan of his music. I think I'm even more annoyed with the music now, more than ever, just because I heard it all Halloween season. But, dude, you have no idea. Yeah. I was like, I wonder how you, I was going to ask you, like, how do you feel after working like in a, like that <laughs> play? Like, you got to be annoyed by the soundtrack. You're like, all right, I've heard, I, I can not hear Blinding Lights for the rest of my life and I'll be okay dude, with that. I'm addicted to it. I like literally did. The intended purpose of doing this collab, right? I mean, obviously, it was cool to make. I'm sure, like, they enjoyed making it together, like both the weekend and and the Halloween Horror Nights team. But yeah. the other intended purpose is to promote the music, right? Obviously, and that's what you yeah. do as an artist. And uh, I have done nothing but listen to the weekend for a good chunk of my October run, which is crazy. You listen to Halloween music for me for some reason it was just synonymous. Like every time I found out I was gonna be in the weekend maze, I would drive from Warner Brothers. I'd just be blasting. All like songs that were that were in the maze i'm just like yeah let's go uh, i don't know what it was just so fun but yeah i mean some of the parts are annoying for example in the toad spot you, you couldn't really tell because you walk through it really fast but i was in there for hours yeah and hours and hours and hours it's and like hours and hours down to blinding lights isn't it it's the opening so if you go to blinding lights yeah go to the song and you hit play da, uh it da, it's the first it's the first 10 seconds on loop yeah. again and again and they every once in a while they'll, they'll throw in because you're supposed to be in the subway they'll throw in like the bum, bum, the train sound right setting up the next room which had the 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 train scare the put the push cart train so um because you're supposed to be you're supposed to be wandering right you're on a drug trip right you see the weekend in the maze he licks a toad you go on a drug trip. You're going through the hallucination hallway. Things are getting trippy. The floor is all squishy. The walls are kind of moving. And then all of a sudden, you, you're kind of coming from your your drug trip, and you're in the subway. You've wandered into the subway. Right. That's kind of how that story is supposed to go. And I was like, oh, no, you're in the subway. So it's kind of like you know where it's supposed to take you. So it's kind of interesting. And then it's like, oh, was that real? Then you see the giant four-legged frog. It's like, holy crap, it's a massive frog. So it's kind of fun. Um, so you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I was I was like not skeptical. I was like excited. I was like, interesting, the weekend – super weird not what i would expect for a horror nights maze but let's let's try it out and i personally think they knocked it out of the park i i, I have yeah. to say dude like i like i said i was the biggest hater about this i just don't mm-hmm. like his music not you know you know me i'm a metal guy i'm a i'm mm-hmm. a rock and roll guy and stuff and uh i i went through it and i i actually really enjoyed it design wise it yeah. just it blew me design wise it was cool it, like the rooms yeah. look really well detailed they you know, me and my girlfriend, we we finally gave in. We had to watch to see what we're getting into, just to see like, okay, the, this is gonna make sense to us when we yeah, watch. Yeah, he's this. got some trippy music videos. So huh? we, yeah, we watched that little mini movie, and I was like, okay, like this makes sense. Like I remember seeing that and this, and I thought it was freaky, but I was like, okay, like I, I just the music for me. It I think my biggest problem was like 
yeah, the videos were creepy and the visuals were creepy, but I was like, but I still don't just hear that. In the, I don't hear that in the music. Like I just when I yeah. when I listen to the music, I don't think that. I think of like happy thoughts. You know what I mean? Like you don't. Yeah, I'm like that. jamming out. I'm like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm like jamming out, not like, like music. he just chopped yeah. Off. He just got his head chopped off. Like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's 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 weird. Um, that's why the, the maze is so trippy. Um, it was very well received by people. Oh, it was. It and was, I, think, I don't even have to work there to know this. That was yeah. the, the longest wait line every single night. Mm-hmm. And um, I, the only reason it's not higher up on my list this year for my mazes, because like it was, I, I put it pretty high, but I think I put it, I would put it as like number four or five for me on my list of mazes this year. The only reason it's not higher is simply because the other mazes were just so phenomenal. <laughs> you know what I mean? There was just so many phenomenal mazes, the weekend included. It was so tough. I mean, like usually there's a clear winner. This year it was kind of hard. I was like, the scarecrow bro it was a toss-up between i i i was it was scare i think scarecrow is my number one as well but it was between scarecrows monsters law your own are all up there i really all like i was one of high. the only people that really enjoyed horror hotel too horror hotel was awesome honestly too i thought the blumhouse maze was was, was dope i didn't get to go through I, that I maze until the second to last night and they finally, I was finally able to get, because you have to get permission for everything, right? Yeah. So they don't want you going through unless you, you have permission. So I was able to get permission, get like a little note saying I was allowed to go through the maze. I got to finally see it. And I was like, obviously, it's not, it's not like the quality of like, for instance, Scarecrows was or like. No, Blumhouse you know, was good because that's actually. Blumhouse is dope. That's, that's the small, fun. that's the smallest fun. maze location. And they made that work. Yeah. And it, it was fun. There was like some that. fun stuff going on. I love you know, the scene Freaky where they show the transformation of him stabbing her and then sw- swapping bodies like that. Yeah, and then they have the funny thing. The actors. Are, I mean, I also got to see it when they're you know they've been doing it all year. But the actors, they have the room where you have the uh, uh, like the girl and the Vince Vaughn character. Their their bodies swap, right? Yeah. And they and they're going like like looking at themselves. Ah, they they pointing at each other. Right. And Vince Vaughn, the guy comes out and goes. Ah, he does a really high pitched scream into the audio. It's so fun. I was like, that's, that's hilarious. It's yeah. so good. Uh, and, then the, and the but, black phone was good at the end, too. Yeah. Hang up the phone. Yeah, that's, Hang up the phone. And then he's just sitting there on the chair, like asleep. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, they really yeah, recreated the guy scared scene. the crap out of me. Yeah. He got me good. He got me so good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was a good maze. Uh, Horror Hotel was freaking awesome. While your Rona was Dark just side amazing. Of Hollywood, you got like a twisted Tower of Terror. Yeah, it's, it's like, like Tower of Terror. It's scary. There's like yeah. doors everywhere. Uh, and so that was cool. And I, I thought it was going to just follow the same route as a Walking Dead attraction. So I was thrown off when you're. Oh, yeah. It's a totally new layout. It so is. that was cool. I hope they keep doing it. And they're, I, from what I heard, they're, they want to keep using that location as a Horror Nights location. Good. I, I was either I, think, I was either always thinking the location or yeah. let's make a let's make a little tribute store like Orlando does. Sure, because I don't think they're going to be. From what I heard, they're not going to be making a permanent. So it's a pro and con. I don't think they're making a permanent Halloween attraction, like a year-round walkthrough attraction. But it will be used, from what I've heard, as a location for Horror Nights for That's smart. the future, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. That another, make, gives them another another inside location inside too. Just. Hmm? Which is great for early entry, right? Because you can doesn't matter how bright it is outside, you can make it whatever well, time you want. But to be fair, they never usually open that for early entry, which kind of sucks. No, you just but, it's down below first, yeah. yeah. But hey, it is what but it is. Cool. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. So let's let's just chat. Let's get back on track, right? I feel bad. We're just I, I could talk about like I said, I'm a huge fan of these events. You know me. I love oh, yeah. I, I'll talk about these events for hours, but um working the weekend. Yeah, I got to fill in that spot a handful of times. Um, the first time I did it, that it was opening Saturday. So I got pulled, right? Weird opening weekend, opening night, super fun. Terry tram second night did two sets grounded and didn't go up on stilts the whole night because of the rain. Uh, third night straight to the weekend. Got to be a toad, baby the toad. And you know, what's kind of funny too, is that the stilt team, um, once again, let me, let me just, just real quick, just trail off the stilt team. Great group of people, guys and girls, um, just really solid people. Uh, good people, really talented. A lot of them love what they do. They love stilts. They're all very big on performing and and stilt walking. And um, it was like such an honor to like not only work with them but to learn a lot from them as well and to get to know all of them. And the, the camaraderie is super cool. You know, like I'm gonna rep this stilt team. You know, till the end of my days. Just just such a cool experience. Great great group of people. But with that being said, got to go to the weekend. I have never, the first night I did it, 
only the first night. The second night, I was like, oh, this is way easier. For some reason, that very, very first night, it was the hardest haunt roll I've ever done in my entire life. Because it's a four legged stone. Even harder, around. even harder than day one, year one of Fright Fest for me. Because I've told that story on podcasts before where I got sick, I threw up, I was overexhausted, I'd run too much. This was even harder than that was. Wow. And the reason is because the way it was all set up, and again, I'm not sure how much behind the scenes I'm supposed to talk here, but the way the whole costume was set up, it's, it's, a, it's a fairly heavy costume. I mean, you just go look at it, right? You got the foam back, you're wearing all of the frog padding, the, the, he- the mask is pretty heavy, and you're with the arm stilts. Now, the, both of the arm, the arm stilts themselves weren't that heavy, but they had that foam frog arm on it as well, which made it. Just to let you know, they were anywhere from 12 to like 16, 17 pounds a piece. Right. So there's different sizes. Some were lighter than others, but they're about average 15 pounds for each arm. So you're walking around, you know, and they're long, so you're just like lugging them around. And on top of that, you're locked in too, right? Because the caution's going to the top of it. Uh, it's it's strapped onto the top of your arm. Now you don't make it too tight, so you can slip your hand out. Um, but then if you do that, it's kind of hard because you have to get the costume back over it. You kind of need to have someone do it for you. Right. So you're kind of just you're kind of sitting there and you're locked in. And once you're locked in, you're locked in. You know what I mean? So the first couple sets, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so much fun. You know, you get to play around with that whole big. So you have that huge open space. You get to still walk in. You're on the four legs, or you're doing some fun stuff. And you know you have you have your strobe trigger if you want to use your your strobe and sound effects with it. I was having fun just kind of going out in the dark sometimes as well and just scaring people without using the strobe light too. Yeah. You know, just to kind of switch it up a little bit. It was so much fun. But by my fourth set, I remember going, "Oh man, this there was some sweat kind of coming down in my eyes and like kind of getting into my mouth a little bit, right?" And um, I remember being like, oh, it's kind of hard to breathe, like like trying to like adjust the mask a little bit and being like, oh, it's it's all good here. I'm just going to just I'll just go behind like my hide because we had a little curtain that we can hide behind. I'm going to go back real fast and just like adjust my mask real fast. I remember going like this and going and lifting my arms up and being like, oh, I'm locked in. Uh-huh. I can't get out of this. Uh-huh. I am stuck here and I can't even see my watch. So I have no time what it is or how much longer I have in here. I could be in here for five, ten 20 minutes. Who knows? I'm just stuck in here with my thoughts. <laughs> and I had a mini panic attack. I started freaking out. I started going like, like hyperventilating, breathing really fast. I'm like, okay, just calm down, relax. It's okay. It's okay. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, I don't know how much longer I'm here. So literally I was like, okay, for the rest of the set, I was like, okay, just, just get one more scare. Boom. I was get a scare. I'll go back. Okay. Take two seconds. <sighs> Breathe. Okay. One more scare. Hit it. Boom. Go. Oh, okay. Come back. Okay. I'm gonna take five seconds here. Breathe. And I, I kept saying, just one more scare, just one more scare, just one more scare. And then finally I, I got swapped out. And I remember taking my mask off and just being like, like looking at my hands. Cause I, you know, you're gripping the, the arm cells too. My hands, I'm just like shaking a little bit. I was just was like, right. What the hell was I just, ha- I haven't had a panic attack that bad in a while. I just was Damn. like, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot for me to get there. You know, I can handle quite a bit. I do get claustrophobic sometimes. Like, that's probably my, my biggest fear. Cause I'm a big guy. I like, I like having my open space. I don't yeah. like being confined into small things. No, I, 100% so I think, I think it, I think it kind of triggered, triggered that phobia of mine a little bit. And, and just kind of got to me. It was crazy. It was like the most wild thing. I was like, how, how fun. I was just like, wow, this is, this is challenging. But and again, I wasn't like, Oh, screw this. I never want to do this again. I was like, this is interestingly challenging. And I, and I can't wait to put the costume back on to try out some new stuff. Cause there's gotta be a better way. But this is this is weird and challenging and so different than what I'm used to, you know, like a fright fest and fun. But you know, the other thought that was going through my head is, oh my god, it's almost one a.m. and I got to wake up to go do tours tomorrow at Warner Brothers. <laughs> I'm so tired. Oh my god! Because the nights during the weekend, you know, you're there till two a.m. Then there's a kind of a say there's a thirty five minute line. Well, you're there till two thirty. You know, just well, it is what it is. You're just gonna be there. Two hour thirty minute line. You know, so it's like, well, you'll get out there when you get out there, yeah. you know, you'll make it happen. But, uh, but yeah, it was just crazy. So that was that first night of being the toad. Um, and I was like, man, that was so tough. And it was kind of funny too. Cause we, we kind of, as the, the, the stilt team, we kind of like romanticized the toad a little bit too. That might not be the right word to use, but we, we were kind of, we were, we were making this big thing out of it. Cause we were like, 
it was always like when we first found out about the toad thing and people were, you know, are posting photos of like the mask and stuff or like, oh, the toad, the toad, the toad. It's all about the toad, you know. And so every time I'd go through the maze, I'd always take a photo of the uh, the slot machine. It'd be like toad, toad, toad. We're like, yeah, toad, toad, toad. You know, and every day on the group chat, uh, we'd play a game. It was who's that toad? Because if somebody was filling in, they would be tonight's toad is and then we'd. <laughs> boom it's this person it's, it's nate it's it's whoever you know be going into it it's kind of funny so we'd always make this big thing about it so it's so fun i was like, i finally towed man that was so tough so the second time i got asked to do it they were like hey we need someone to fill in would you like to you know go and fill in the spot i was like thinking yeah i do want to try it again it was a lot of fun i just want to make sure you know and i was like I'm just going to see if I can make it work. And the second time I did it, it was just night and day difference. I was like, why is it so much easier right now? Maybe I was in better shape. Maybe I was just more used to stilts. I don't know. It could have been a lot of things, but I was just like, oh, I feel way better. Doing it. I had a great night doing it. And I got a couple compliments from the supervisors from the weekend. And after that, I was kind of just every once in a while, they'd pull me when they needed me. So I unfortunately didn't get to try out too many other spots, mainly because I'm tall and didn't fit into a whole lot of other spots. So I personally only really got to do the Terra Tram and the weekend. I did get to do a little bit of time in Killer Clowns, just to let you know, which is silly. Really? Yeah, yeah. just just briefly, just just for funsies, but it's it only for a night. Right there, man. Yeah, it was just it was just uh for a few sets for one night. That was it. But um, at the after the terror tram was over, I got to go hop over for a little bit. That's so cool. That was silly. But for stilt rolls, it was only those other two. So I I didn't get to try too much. But the, like I said, because I was in the toad so much, the weekend kind of felt like a second home for me. Right. Uh, this year. So my main home, my main family was was the tram, the tram fam. But uh, uh, you know, the weekend, they're a great group of people. Um, scares, good group of scares. Um, and did a great job. That was fun. And the supervisors, uh, I had a great time with my supervisors, both at Terra Tram and over at the weekend. Super great. Like I have a lot of positive things to say about universal personally, okay. just a really great first year, a really great first experience with the company. Um, and just in so many ways, it's just, just, just so positive. Got to learn a lot about myself, got to learn a lot about my limits of what I can and can't take got to test my mental fortitude my my strength because you wake up after three and a half hours of sleep sometimes i do the weekend i get two and a half that's it that's all you get you wake back up you get home late you shower you get two and a half maybe three hours you wake up back for work and you wake up and you're like god damn <laughs> i'm so tired and it takes it takes a certain strength you know and i had a lot of people go how are you still functioning how are you still functioning I, I just drowned those people out because the more I thought about it, the harder it was. So I was like, if I just don't think about it, if I could just make it through and just start joking around with my friends at Warner Brothers and just go start joking around with my friends over at Universal, I'll just forget I'm tired and I'll, and I'll make it through. And I am sitting here now telling you, I don't know how I made it through two months of doing this to myself. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I would wake up at 745. I would go to bed usually around 3 a.m. And I'd rinse and repeat. Did I say wake up at 7.45? That's the time I got to work. I'd wake up at 7 a.m. I would go to bed around 3, wake up at 7. Every night, Monday morning, I'd wake up at 7 a.m. I would go to work. I would come home on Monday afternoon around 4, 4.30, and I would fall asleep for like 15 hours. <laughs> and I would go into a, a coma-like state and just sleep and sleep and sleep and just try to regain. I had Tuesday and Wednesdays off completely from both jobs. And I would just sleep all day. I don't think I left. I don't think I left my couch. I would just order food because I, I mean, I don't like, I usually don't spend that much money, but I was making double paychecks. You know what I mean? It was worth it in a lot of ways. It was rewarding both, you know, connection wise, new experiences, like learning new stuff about myself. I yeah. was losing weight, making good money, but at what cost? I was getting zero sleep. My mind was slipping. I was just like, what's going on? It was kind of fun. You know, I'd be like, yeah, sure. Let's, let's order in every day. Why not? I, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't have, that's the thing. I, I would spend so much money on food because I didn't have time to make food for myself. I was like, I either one, get 30 minutes less sleep and make a lunch for myself or two, I'll just use one of my two paychecks and pay for food because I, I don't have time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even between jobs, I don't have time to like stop at my, my apartment it's to grab like, lunch. Yeah. 
You got to do what I, you I didn't have the time for it. I didn't have the time for it. Usually I'm pretty frugal when it comes to saving money. Didn't have the time. I'm fucking Couldn't proud. Do it. I'm proud of you, kid. I really am. Fucking crazy. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. A lot of people were, a lot, I've gotten a lot of good comments from both Warner Brothers, people at Universal, um, from the still team, from my family, from my friends, loved ones. It's just like people are proud of me. And yeah, I, I accomplished it. I did it. You know what I mean? It now, wasn't easy. Now get it was like the hardest work I've ever done. months of sleep in before you probably maybe have to do it again <laughs> right well that's what i'm again every year i say this anything could happen over the next year yeah so i'm sure people are also going to want to know where I'm, I'm planning on scaring next year what i'm planning on doing um i love doing still see universal i would like to go back i would like to go back but i don't know yet who's Who's to say? My my plan my plan as of right now, I would like to go scare another year at Universal. Don't know though. We'll see. Anything unless, can happen over the years. We'll have to find out. Unless, unless Warner Brothers decides to open up another event. By the anything name of can Horror happen. Made here. Warner anything Brothers. Anything could happen. Listen, okay, listen. Anything Warner Brothers happen. Discovery, you listen to the fans with the Snyderverse. <laughs> and I appreciate the hell out of that. You're turning things around for the better, and I understand <laughs> it now. Please bring back Hormade here. That will be profitable, I promise you. HMH, you know what's funny? Is we are doing an HMH, but it's called Holidays Made Here. And a lot of people are like, it's Horror Made Here, it's Horror Made Here. Unfortunately, it wasn't. Uh, but... They know I've talked to a few people and they're very jazzed about wanting to do something for Halloween again in the future. I hope so. Uh, I don't know exactly what, like I said, like all I heard was them go They're They're very motivated to make a fun Halloween event. I so, hope so keep it on your radar. Keep it on the radar again. Like I love Warner Brothers. Although so I like I said, you'll probably be seeing me in the next couple of months. Cause my girlfriend is a massive Gilmore girls. Oh, fan. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, well, that's where holidays made here is going to be. It's going to be over in the where the Gilmore Girls sets are. That's so. why I want to take her Perfect. because you know she loves all that. I'm like, get your photos, have a great time, <laughs> enjoy it. Come know, talk to Nate, the tour guide. He'll give you a fun like, little tour. I was like, yes, <laughs> no, you're going to be the first person I hit up because I'm like, there's only one person that does my tour guides now, and you know, uh, we will make it on the day he is available because mm -hmm. I'm not missing. Anything. Heck yeah, yes, dude, yes. And then, uh, <laughs> but I was like, I don't know anything about the show, but you could tell me a bunch of things, and I'll be tend to act interested even though i really am interested because it's you you know but i yeah, i just gilmore girls loves I'm just like gilmore girl fans are are so jazzed about that show they love that show you want to talk big bang theory then i'm all in <laughs> you know yeah there's a couple of fun ones yeah that's about how i am with horror movies there yeah. or like a lot of the dc stuff i love talking to batman you want to talk dc bro i could talk all day you want to talk harry potter like as you're sitting there you're holding your hand up you have a batman superman logo on your your there forearm i <laughs> that, you know, and I got the Punisher. and the Punisher. The Punisher. Oh, that's Marvel, but still, hey, it's hey, okay. You know what? This okay. one, this one was first, though. There you go. It was there you go. But uh, yeah, but yeah, it's just, 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 just kind of crazy. I, I'm still like said, in shock that I made it through this year. Um, I'm like I said, I'm just proud of myself. Um, and yeah, here to tell everybody, don't give up because you know if you're motivated to do something, if you have a connection to something, then do it. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. And it never hurts to try it out, even if you don't think it's possible. I had people literally tell me, "Hey, that's not possible. Hey, that's not healthy. You shouldn't be doing that." And I was like, Ooh, "Don't tell me what I can and can't do. I hate, I hate when people try to tell me that." I was like, "I'm going to do it," and I did it. And it was tough. And it was tough. The one thing I didn't account for, to be honest, was my immune system. So there was a few nights I had that a few days I had to take off work because I got sick two different times. It wasn't COVID, you know, fortunately, but it, it, cause my immune system was just so bad because I'm just working, 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 no sleep, no sleep, no sleep. When you don't get sleep, when you start to struggle like that and you're out in the elements and you're, you're working hard, your body starts to take a hit. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a, so that's, yeah. the, that's the one thing I didn't account for. Cause I, I did a lot of prep work to get ready for this season. So um, but besides that, yeah, I did it every night, every night. And that's all. I was only gone matters. from Horror Nights a few nights, and those are nights I had requested days off to go to. Uh, one night I went to Horror Nights as a guest. The other night I went to Fright Fest as a guest. Mm -hmm. And that made it happen. Yeah, nice. it was uh, not easy, but we, I did it. I did it, and I'm so proud. And on top of that, um, I got some super cool stuff, too. Like, for instance, I can, I can show this now, I feel like. I mean, I did post about this recently. I was I was honored to receive this award here. 
see if it focuses here. I'm gonna take off my thing. Hold on one second. Let me take off my the blur effect. My effect here on the camera. I just kinda hide in the messy background of my, my apartment. Hey. <laughs> that's why mine's dark. <laughs> I, I haven't like I said, I haven't cleaned or checked my mail or done anything in the last two months because I haven't had time. Um but yeah, I was honored to receive this award right here. Scare actor of the year, Terra Tram. Nate 1000, which is another funny story. So that was super cool. Um, they did give out a few Scare Actor of the Year awards on Terror Tram um, because there were so, so many of us. We had a cast of like 120 right. people. So a few people got this award because there was like different locations, you know. But yeah, I was honored to be one of the recipients of it. And um, huge honor. It was like, you know, a huge validating moment for me to to receive that. You know, and again, I'm not trying to show, I'm not trying to like show it off and be like, oh, I'm cocky and stuff. But to be my first year at a brand new event, I had no idea what to expect. And on top of the fact that I was working this many hours and this hard, right? And I received that on Halloween, which was day five, right? Because that last weekend we did five nights. I worked 86 hours that week. Damn. Thursday through Monday. 86 hours over five days. So I'm sitting there. On my final shift for this five day run, right? Because I had to work, I had to work uh, ten shifts in five days, right? Warner Brothers Universal, and uh, to receive that, it was just this big validating moment for me. That was like, no, you did it, you gave it your all, you were here, you worked hard, your performance didn't slack, you didn't, it didn't suffer, and I was able to do it. And I just, man, it really broke me down, man. It got me. Yeah, That's it's crazy. Started. Like, just what a. What a bang to really end the year. You know what I'm much saying? Deserved. To end the year with a bang. Much deserved indeed, my friend. <sighs> much and crazy. much deserved. Z. Yes. Crazy, 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 crazy. What a crazy year, man. That, that's kind of my story. That's my story right there. That's the story. I got, I got one final question for you. Fire away, big dog. What's going on? For next year on my birthday, can you come dressed as Blue Con and we can have like a clown for the party? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do. I can dress like something fun. I got oh, yeah. some uh, got some leftover prosthetics from the, the very talented Scott Ramp lying around at yeah, Fright yeah, Fest, yeah. you know, like in the, and uh, you know, a girlfriend who just so happens to be a very talented, award winning Fright Fest makeup artist. Award so, winning. That's it. So <laughs> fun stuff. Um, yeah. Now I'm gonna I'm and gonna I'm gonna save that favor yeah, in case yeah. we ever need to film like a short film or something. <laughs> That's when that favor will come. Okay. I'll come dress as my ex wife. There you go. <laughs> Made the joke. Found a way. Yep, there it is. I had to uh, put it in there. Um, to could I just tell one last story real fast? Yes, it's kind of funny. Please do. Because I have on you can see on my screen it says Nate one thousand. Yeah, on there and on that little word to Nate one thousand. I have a lot. A lot of people ask me, "Hey, what does the one thousand mean on your name?" It's kind of my nickname that I was given at Horror Nights, and it's super fun. It's a fun story. It was. Um, what everybody called me and I kind of just ran with it and made this whole like futuristic character off of it. And it's based off of the fact that every character has a role number. So they, they will give you a role number because there's so many characters, right? There was like 750 or however many people that worked Horror Nights this year, just wow. scares alone. A lot of people, that's a lot of costume pieces, right? Some people have like seven, eight different costumes, a lot of mass, right? A lot of keeping track of different people. So to help out, every character has a roll number as well. That way they can they can track your costume and your mask and everything, right? Just just for just a really clean system. Like I said, very, very clean the way everything is very professional, clean cut. So I just so happened to be roll number 1,000. That was my roll number. And so oftentimes they'd ask you, okay, what's your name and number? So I go, oh, Nate, 1,000. Nate number 1,000. 1000 and so the makeup artist when they would give me my mask when i would get ready to go out on set you know they would go nate 1000 nate 1000 nate 1000 they made this whole thing about me being nate 1000 like this this like futuristic person and i'd, I'd always be on my stilts right i would go up to like that where the makeup artists were on my stilts with my costume would be like nate 1000 and they would hand my mask so i could put it on and, and go start scaring right because <laughs> they, they they hold on to it and like do stuff to it while i'm not you know on set right um very talented makeup team and and it was always like Nate 1000, you know? And so I started bringing in props. I started bringing in like these little Cyclops glasses, these like glasses that were like these like futuristic, like time cop glasses. They, they, they kind of look like, like imagine Cyclops from like the X-Men comic books. <laughs> <laughs> like that. 
and I was like, Nate 1000. And then I would, sometimes I'd wear this like Hawaiian t-shirt because one, we, we do dress up nights. Right. It's so much fun. Like I said, like, like working these events is great. Like if y'all listen to this, you know, um, go work out, you know, go work a haunt. Horror nights is so much fun. So much fun. Uh, every Sunday we do like a potluck and also a dress up night as well. Like we'd all dress up like some fun stuff. So the one, one week, the, the first week I brought in the classes, it was stranger things night. And I dressed up as Hopper with the mustache and real mustache um, right there. Yeah. It's real mustache. Totally real. Real. And I haven't fake. shaved. I haven't shaved, but you know, the mustache I had all year, it's uh, every stunt man. I felt like a stunt man up on those stilts and every, every good stunt man has mustache. Yep. Learn that from Hot Rod. Yep. So you got me as Hopper from Stranger Things. I'm wearing a floral shirt because I was trying to look like him from the third season. And uh, I was wearing that floral shirt on top of like my other costume pieces. And then like I had these like futuristic glasses on. And I was like, from the year 3000, Nate 1000 is here. Nate 1000, I'm here from the future. And it kind of became this whole thing. And I was like, yo, it's Nate 1000. And I was like, just like dance. Like, poosh, poosh, poosh. like people were like playing music on speakers. And I was just like, dancing with people like, like in the break room and everyone's like yeah getting down with it and stuff <laughs> and then it became this whole thing from there and out people are like yo when's he coming back i'm like yo guys next sunday nate 1000 will be there for a meet and greet they'll be there and i was like oh, okay meet and greet meet and greet and then i was like boom sunday to roll around hey nate we're gonna pull you for the weekend oh like sorry i'm going to the be the toad for the night and everyone's like on the group chat where the hell is nate 1000 my like, guys i don't know what happened i don't know what happened you know and i was like oh i'm making up excuses oh there's a problem with the space crystals or something you know like blah blah, blah space pirates <laughs> and i was like oh man and then next week finally I'd, I'd have somebody like some one of their scarers in the makeup artist they would go hey everybody look at the changing tent i think like you know we'd have these really small changing tents i think like a raccoon or something went in there is a raccoon and everyone would get up and people would be like looking in and stuff and all of a sudden i would come out with like a voice changer like show me what you got. I'm Nate 1000. I would kick down the door and stuff, and everyone's like, ah, doing like the meet and greet. Like everyone would line up, and they would come over and take photos with me and stuff. And <laughs> it's it's great. I actually have a photo if you want to see. Fucking Nate, Nate 1000. 1000, bro. I, uh, this is this will be a fun little end of the uh, story here. I I got this. We did a, a secret Satan at the end of the year as well. It's like a secret Santa. Yeah. And we, we all gave pulled names, gave each other gifts. Um. Funny enough, I and the person who got me had we we ended up getting each other just randomly unbeknownst us and i got he loved nate 1000 so i got him some nate 1000 glasses and some of his favorite candy nice. and 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 he got me like these fun futuristic gloves that i i would wear like he's like 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 rave gloves and also he made this little photo for me and so here's nate 1000 posing with hollywood harry Nate 1000 and Hollywood Harry, man. It's the dynamic duo. <laughs> there he is. Nate 1000. It's the dynamic duo. That's the maze right there. John Murdy, I hope you're taking notes. That's the maze right there. That's the maze right there. And and it's great because um, Nate 1000. We were, we were joking. Oh, next Hollywood year, Harry. guys, Terra Tram 2023. It's Terra Tram hosted by Nate 1000. You know, it's going to be the character. Uh, and you know what's funny is that some of the people from the Terra Tram, you know, and I, 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 you know, John Murray is a very busy guy, so I didn't get to talk to him a whole lot, but I did, I did get to chat with him a little bit, and and he's a he's a funny dude. He he likes to get down with some of the jokes. Murdy's I'm good. not gonna lie, he's he's he likes to get down with some of the jokes. He he has a soft spot for Terra Tram, and he, um, when he was in town, would come over and and talk to everybody a little bit in the break spaces and stuff. And, you know, sometimes he would hear about some of the jokes and he was always kind of like, oh, that's funny. He even participated in a video near the end of the year with me, which is, I think, a story for another time. But very, very funny guy. So shout out to him, you know. Um, but he knows of Nate 1000. He knows because one of the scarers made a T-shirt that said, and I'm still waiting on mine to come in the mail, but it said, I met Nate 1000 at the Terra Tram and all I got was his T-shirt. And it's a photo of me that someone photoshopped. There was one time we had our, our our crash pad, our like practice pad that we have when we fall over on stilts. Yeah, we had that. And um, just to be funny, I took a video where I was dancing as eight one thousand on my stilts, and I fell over like on the mat. You yeah. know, just to be funny. And I was just sitting there, and they're like, "Oh, he's in stasis mode. He's in stasis mode." You know. And so I was in there like uh, like a robot. And someone took that, and they they just blacked out the whole image. So it's just, it looks like I'm floating in space. So it's like it's like me sitting there like on my back floating. <laughs> and they made that shirt, and they took the screenshot. It was of that one and one other bootleg like Terry Tram shirt. Yeah. And this actor, she she tagged John Murdy on Twitter and was like, 
hey, you should let me design next year's merch and stuff. And he responded. He responded with something along the lines of like, oh, like I do have some bootleg Terry Tram merch that actors have given me in the past, you know, like basically like he holds on to whenever people give him stuff, he does hold on to it, which I also think is super chill. That he does. That's awesome. Um, very, very funny. So he knows of the existence of Nate 1000 because one of the shirts was me. Nate 1000 yep. floating in space and he commented here, here, on it. Here's the uh, concept that I have for the maze. <laughs> Nate 1000 V Hollywood Harry. And it's got to be V. No versus. Ooh. It's got to be V. Yeah. V. V Hollywood Harry. Yeah. Who's ready to party? Yep. yep. <laughs> and every. Their introductions to the maze has to be like an like a, like you're playing a Mortal Kombat game. It's got to be yep. something cool with like a pose or like a catch line or something. Yep. 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 And it's funny because. um. You know, I can't post too many Nate 1000 bits on there because, like, I don't want to post too much the backstage areas. Hey, that's but for you to enjoy. It's literally a lot of the stuff I took. It's never going to get posted anywhere. It's just it's just for but me to enjoy. I, I expect the next time phone. I see you in person, I got it. I got it. I can give you a little rundown. I can show you some funny stuff. Need, Boy, need, do I got some videos I was for like, you. You better prepare a PowerPoint because we could be there all night. <laughs> Just crazy, yeah. That was like the whole thing. So I was like, Nate, what's so everyone know Nate 1000? Nate 1000, Nate 1000. So it just kind of became my thing. So I, I figured since we're talking Horror Nights tonight, yeah, it was only cool. fair that I put down Nate 1000. Nate 1000 lives on. Well, Nate, uh, <laughs> man, you gave me, I think, one of the best insights of working Horror Nights that I've ever heard. And I've had a few people on. Thank you. They've given me. I mean, I guess it's always based on everyone's experience with it. Everyone's eyes, personal are different. experience, yeah. yeah and, mm -hmm. and so, I mean, just to hear everyone's stories about it. But you really gave us. I think you gave the fans a, a really good in-depth look behind the scenes of what it's like to work at this event. And and yeah, you know us here it's a on great the night. Time. I mean, it's a great time. You know us here on the channel. We don't like to. We never really like to, of course, sport, expose secrets or you know. That's not yeah. I, I tried not to. Yeah. You know, there's certain things I don't want to reveal that are like trade secrets. Right. It's just mostly just my experience. You know. Yeah. Mostly that, just and me. That's, and that's the running point of the, back and forth between jobs. <laughs> that that's the point of the show is we want to get the experience of the actor of how they felt going into the season and mm -hmm. what it was like for them to to work the events and whatnot. In your case, you had a, a full-time day job then you went into a mm -hmm. night job and then you got your sleep and then rinse repeat Oof. And go over again it's tough it's tough but it is it is possible it just depends on how motivated you are you and what kind I of head you were legit in. on the einstein schedule <laughs> yeah literally literally i was on the end of my rope that yeah. last week i was like if this went any longer i don't think i'd be able to do it yep you're glad it's crazy only nights crazy Horror crazy, nights crazy, is crazy. the biggest and and longest haunt in, in SoCal, mm -hmm. they, they start the earliest as far as as early September and go all the way until uh, the rest of September and October. So um, even yeah, the most September, hours too, you know, yeah. each night, and, and even even to the point too where in some years it's even gone into like the first two, the first weekend of November. So I mean, you know, it, it depends on on what we, you know what we're looking at, but I mean, and not to mention every night this year was a record breaking night of selling out. So you had crowds of yeah. crowds come through and, and see you guys. So many, so many people. It was so cool and, and really supportive. And a lot of people saying, you said really great things. And um, it was kind of everyone's, you know, confirmations and nice words to me that kind of helped keep me going. So, hey, and that's you know. it. And for everyone out there, just going to say, great, great place to work. I, I loved it. Super fun, hot. Um, I had, you know, just as much fun working there as I have in every year of the haunt I worked at Fright Fest. Uh, if you're wondering which haunt you should work at, if you're looking to work at one, just do your research, you know, look up kind of how it works for each totally different experiences, totally different. There's no way to even compare the two. So, but you should do it. It's fun. I got Try you. it out. I um, had the opportunity to scare at a home haunt or yeah. a local haunt this year. Home haunts are great too. I've done home haunts before I, as well. Uh, before Fright Fest. I worked at dark harvest this year. That was a lot of fun. Oh, you worked at dark harvest. That's a great time. That was a uh, the Perdition Home guys are great dudes. Yeah, they're hilarious. They are good fun. dudes. And now they're now the ones that run Dark Harvest. So that was a lot of fun. Super exciting stuff. Yeah. So yeah. No man, I wanna I wanna thank you for all the the yeah. uh, incredible hard work that you did this year, and and it really paid off for you in the long run as far as being rewarded Scare Actor of the Year for your for your Terror Tram man. One of the, one of the people getting uh, awarded that. That's that's huge. I mean, that's a big payoff for you too. So Definitely. No, and thank you for your support, man, and coming by and seeing us and, and making this podcast so I could tell my 
my tales, you know? know. <laughs> it's nice to it's have this all out the in the open. Chapter, you know what I mean? Like, the first yeah, time we got to this do this is, with you, it was, it was you and the brother, and now it's just you. And This ain't even the next chapter. This is a brand new book, baby. I know. We're going, we're going deep chapter in. One. Chapter 1. Chapter 1, volume 2. There you go. <laughs> there you go, man. Yep. I mean, it, it was uh, an absolute pleasure to walk through every night to see you guys. I mean... I didn't get. I don't know very many people that worked at Horror Nights because you know I'm more local boy at Knots and stuff and and whatnot. So to to have you guys work there was kind of cool because I was like, hey, it gives me a reason to actually want to go through these things to go visit yeah. my friends and whatnot. So awesome stuff, yeah. Especially on those pack nights yeah. when I was waiting two hours just to see you guys in the mm-hmm. winter. You did it. You you stuck it out. Yeah, yeah you you as were there. Annoyed as I was listening to the same six <laughs> songs in line. For two hours, <laughs> at least three or four times, I was like, I'm doing the weekend, this to see baby. my friends. I'm doing this to see my friends. I'm doing this to In see my friends. In your eyes, I see the I actually eventually got smart with it. I just, my, my girlfriend brought Bluetooth headphones. I'm like, give me them. <laughs> you know what's funny, too, is sometimes um, I didn't do this. I, w- I would usually just not wear anything or wear earplugs sometimes. But sometimes actors will wear headphones while they, they scare. Yeah. Yeah, That's great. I saw it it's a hilarious. lot. I actually saw it a lot in Grimoire this year at Knotts. Yeah. Yeah. So, and so people were really listening to music. So, hey, but yeah, if you want the Toad Experience Band, close your eyes uh, and play the first 10 seconds of the weekend or the, uh, the Blinding Lights by the weekend. Yeah. And that's that is the Toad Experience. Or you can go on YouTube.com slash the Knights of Horror and watch the POV. There you go. Or you can go to Knights of Horror page and watch the POV. Online. Online. On the line. Jacking in. <laughs> oh my god, Nate. Uh for for one, thank you for coming on the show. And yeah. I know uh now you'll hopefully have a little bit of free time. We gotta get back on the streaming again too. Yeah, get back on the stream. I'm gonna probably be streaming this week. I have um this week completely off. Hey, I, listen, t- I took uh, I'm taking myself a little staycation. Knights of Horror Gaming is streaming tomorrow. So you let me know. I might uh Ooh, okay. I might try out a few things. Uh, one of those things might be a little Resident Evil Reverse, but uh, Ooh, how fun! I'm down to try some trying to trying to get in a game or something. Yeah, let's get something going. Let's Great go. stuff. I'll hit you up, but right. uh, yeah. Final thing, uh, any social media that you want to plug in so people can check you out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you wanna um, you know, if you wanna follow me, um, probably the most active I am is on Instagram. This could be at Sharknado. Most of my socials have to do with that nickname as well. I have so many nicknames. I'm the man of many nicknames. <laughs> but Sharknado, S-H-A-R-K-N-A-T-E, and then usually the O is spelled a zero. So, and it's not Nate O. It's, it's, it's Sharknado, like the movie. And it's a play off the word Sharknado. But they have that one because I have, you know, Twitch as the Sharknado. Yeah. Um, and on as well. So I do sw- stream, on, stream on Twitch occasionally. I have been inactive the entirety of September and October as much as I wanted to play my horror games and use my fun spooky overlays I made last year. Eh, I had no time. On the days I had off, I was just sleeping and watching anime on my couch the whole time and Cobra Kai. So I didn't really have time to do much besides that. Oof, so good. But, uh, you know, so, but I will be getting back to streaming. Um, if you ever want to come talk to me live or yeah, if you have any questions about like work and haunts or like if you're interested in getting involved at Fright Fest or at Horror Nights and you're kind of curious more about some of the stuff, uh, message me then we could chat, you know, chat it up. or, or learning how to do stilts, you know, um, you know, I could, I do stilt lessons with people sometimes as well or sliding. I haven't really slid in a while, but yeah, we can go sliding. If you want to learn more about sliding too. Get you back Not opposed into, to it. Get you back into it. Get you unrusted. The man yeah. with that it's great come with oh, blah, blah, blah. I can't even talk. That's how tired I'm getting. The man that comes up with a lot of great nicknames. And the man <laughs> that will tell you an ex wife joke faster than we can finish this sentence. Yeah. I know. The only thing I wish that ended faster was my previous marriage. With the ex wife. Boom shakalaka, baby. Boom, That's what I'm talking about. Laka. <laughs> <laughs> with all that being said i'm your host anthony i host this amazing podcast well it's not that amazing it's it's fun i have a lot of fun it's pretty amazing it's okay. good yeah i'm just I'm it's just adequate myself up i mean it's you know it's <laughs> all right you know it's, it's all right it's, you know it's it, pretty we, good you know you know we got some episodes here and there they're pretty fun it's all right uh, yeah, good shit. If you guys are fans of haunt and horror related things, especially in the SoCal area, uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you guys are not yet subscribed to the channel, yeah, baby, bell notification be aware every time we put up a new Ding. video. We got some, we got some content coming your way, especially because I just got an email that I was very happy to see for some future coverage and an event coming up really soon. So Ooh. catch us really soon. Oh, fun. With that 
Follow us on social media at Knights of Horror yeah. on Twitter and at the Knights of Horror on TikTok and Instagram. Where actually we just posted a TikTok of this guy, uh, Ayo. of how how it feels to chew five gum, <laughs> and uh, you'll see what what it's like for him to chew five gum. So, it's not anything like as what you would expect. So, no, a whole different person <laughs> than you just that we just talked to right now. You know what I mean? Oh man. <laughs> With all that being said, we love each and every one of you, and we'll see you tomorrow for another episode of Character Appreciation Month. Lego. So long, everybody. Bye-bye.